Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India back with the last lecture of this module that is lecture 5 of module 6. The module is on ferrous and non-ferrous metals. So, we have extensively discussed in the previous lectures on ferrous metals which is extensively used in building as a structural element in form of rebars and as well as rolled sections itself and we have seen several uses of it. Now, we will come to the non-ferrous metals which have a certain number of advantages over ferrous metals and yes, we will have to know them one by one and their uses are not typical like the ferrous metals. They are not that much taking strength and but their major advantage is the point which was raised many a time while discussing in the la la other lect previous lectures that was corrosion, which is not much happening here, which is the oxidation basically. So, we will cover the non-ferrous metals, metal extraction processes obviously, we will be very short as we had elaborated in during the, we, we have elaborated extraction of metals during the previous lectures it will be very much similar to it. Some salient properties and uses, we will try to cover aluminum which has the maximum use in building industry as a non-ferrous metal. Next, we have copper, zinc, lead and we had also discussed sometime tin which was used in the Pilkington process of making glass. So, those have industrial application for building materials. Again, Non-ferrous metals have a very good role in alloy formation with ferrous metals like chromium, like nickel. So, those are very minimally used and we may not ignore them, but we may not discuss them extensively in this course. So, coming to the first few buildings where we see the application of non-ferrous metals as an external element. You see there are lots of sections of aluminum here in the picture which may be used as an external element for a false wall that is a clad wall. So, there you can have use of aluminum. So, the wall is a curtain wall which is not actually taking load but it is helping in the aluminum bars are rolled sections are helping in holding the glass in position. So, this is used on the external to avoid the corrosion component. Parallel you see another building which is in Walt Disney is the Epcot building Epcot structure where you see this is also entirely made of aluminum panels some 11,000 panels have been joined together, have been assembled together rather to give this kind of spherical shape. So, aluminum is very soft. Now, we see the other two pictures, both are made of copper as you see, it is copper roofing, where copper has been used to seal the water entry to make the structure airtight, but you can see there is a difference in color. That is because of the oxidation of copper in this picture where it has become green, but in this picture it has retained its luster that is shine. So, some inaccessible portions of a building like a clock tower top where no one will be visiting 
ever in say 100 years, copper is the answer. You will see lot of old buildings, churches, turrets, they are having copper tops, roofings. So, it is maintenance free and how has this color come? That is due to the oxidation of copper, we will come to that. Now, in building we find as I told you aluminum, copper, zinc, lead and tin and all these non-ferrous metals also experience surface oxidation like corrosion of ferrous metals. But in case of ferrous metals, this ferrous, ferric oxide or rust used to increase in volume and peel out or create pressure and come out finally and expose the next layer. In case of aluminum or copper or zinc, the oxide formation is happening similarly because they are metals they will be behaving very much similar. But what is not happening is it is not falling out. So, it is creating a self protection to the ferrous metal. So, this self protective layer is protecting the inner metal and is not allowing it for further oxidation or weakening. The green color what you had seen for case of copper is nothing but copper oxide which is also called patina and that is the protective layer. More the age of the copper, more you will see it is greenish. So, this copper patina is nothing but the oxide of copper which is actually protecting the copper from further oxidation and decay. Hence, this is the major difference between ferrous metals and non-ferrous metals. Though non-ferrous metals are not that strong, but they are capable of taking up some other tasks in buildings which the ferrous metals could not. So, the advantages are it is resistant to corrosion, more strength to weight ratio that is they are light, they have high tensile strength, yes not comparable to that of ferrous metals may be, they are also ductile and malleable. So, you can have sheet forms, you can have plate forms as you had seen in case of ferrous metals. You can draw it, they are, they can be made into wires. Coming to the disadvantages, yes, it is not abundantly available at the, at, as much as ferrous metals are available, that is iron ores are available, but extraction process also requires more of funds, money. So, lower in strength than ferrous metals that also I have told. So, these metals cannot be used as structural elements that means they cannot be used as rebars or reinforcement bars, neither they can take lot of load like a structural load a building cannot be standing on aluminum rods, aluminum rolled sections, but yes they can take lighter weights. So, coming to first non-ferrous metal which is aluminum which has been used extensively since 1970s, it has replaced wood particularly in case of doors and windows. Yes, ferrous metals also had taken its place, but due to the problem of rusting etcetera and also the look that is the aesthetically pleasing part aluminum has taken the place of wood. So, since 1970s the buildings are relying on aluminum, internal partition walls the framework are mostly aluminum because they are not load bearers, they are only separators earlier it was made with wood structures, wood framework with maybe glass infills. Now, it is aluminum framing. 
So, if you keep your eyes open, if you visit some office interior, if you enter into some small office where lot of partitions has been done, if you enter into a computer laboratory where cubicles are made, you will see it is all aluminum framing. So, coming to the extraction, the main ore or the major ore is bauxite and we use the Bayer's process to get, get this aluminum oxide to be converted. Then we follow the hall hillots process by electrolysis in molten cryolite and we get pure aluminum. So, these are the few steps. So, you need to know the steps electrolysis is done and aluminum in its pure form is siphoned out. But remember aluminum in its pure form is very soft and whatever we use for building industry we need to alloy it. So, we have to mix other metals with it to make it usable as a structural member. So, we will come to that gradually after we finish the properties. So, aluminum as I already told as non-ferrous metal property, it has high strength to weight ratio, easy in fabrication and assembly that is why it is suitable for doors, windows, frameworks, any kind of partitionings, frameworks for partitionings etcetera. Being light, it is easy to handle, transportation cost is obviously less because of its light weight, but it is not suitable as a structural member. It has a shine, it is highly reflective, so light when falls on it reflects, but this, this, this luster gives it a aesthetically pleasing value. It is, it behaves well at low temperature which might be problem with ferrous metals. Corrosion resistant that is the oxide formation on top of it prevents it. High scrap value, you can get almost 100 percent return from the aluminum which is actually unusable or it has to go back to the factory for reuse. It is sound proof and obviously maintenance free. You do, do not need to paint aluminum, you need to paint wood to protect it from moisture, to protect it from termite attacks etcetera. You have to put, you have to paint ferrous items, say a ferrous window frame, you have to paint it regularly or galvanize it. In this case aluminum will stand as it is, if you not require, do not require, you do not need to paint it. Coming to the tensile strength, you see in cast form it is 117 Newton per millimeter square, in wire form that, that is when it is ductile it is 270, 240 Newton per millimeter square. So, it is much less than that of steel. And we also give a brief on the joinery because as you see doors, windows etcetera are being made. Let us see what kind of joinery goes with it. You can rivet it, you can bolt it, you can braze it, you can weld it. We have gone through all these processes in details. Riveting was a permanent kind of joint, bolting you can unbolt it, but what you cannot do is soldering because aluminum is a great heat sink. So, when you are doing soldering at a very low, low it is referred to be at low temperature at around 300 degree centigrade, the aluminum draws the heat. So, you have to keep on heating it more and more. So, that temperature to reach that temperature by that time aluminum which is actually melting at 660 degree centigrade. 
soldering may be a difficulty. Yes, there are ways, but it is usually not recommended. Coming to screws, because we have skipped that during riveting and bolting, you need special screws for aluminum hollow sections. I think you can see this picture, you can see it is very different kind of hinge holding two aluminum surfaces. If you see a little closer picture, you can see here that the screw is not like the regular screw. So, this has gone through, it is hold at this thin section, this thin section at two points and it is holding. So, this is a kind of, it is a section through the hinge, through the frame where you can see the hinge, how it has penetrated inside. So, here you can see this is the, what you see from outside, which is quite unlike the other hinge which we regularly see. If you see your door at your home, you will see here are, this is a very common hinge, what you can see. But in case of aluminum doors, windows, if you want, you have to use such kind of special screws. And hence, if you observe correctly, you will see most residential uses, aluminum windows are sliding. So, usually it is avoided to make it hung, that is side hung windows, these you are quite aware of. So, at side hung you have to have the hinges at the, at the with the frame, which is avoided mostly. Even doors are also sliding, it is preferred. It is not that it is not there, if you require you have to use such kind of hinge. For hollow sections, aluminum can be tempered at 350 degree centigrade. The major points are written for you and the discussions will help you for better understanding. So, as I told you coming to the use aluminum is very soft, you need to alloy it with copper, zinc, magnesium, sorry manganese, silicon, nickel etcetera. So, different proportions are required and we are not entering into the metallurgy part. We need structural aluminum and for that whatever is suitable we will get it from the market. So, you see this is the section which is made from rolled section. We have extensively discussed rolling of steel the same way aluminum is rolled out. You will get same kind of sections, I section, channel section, T section, angle section rectangular round section, hollow section. So, whatever you get for non ferrous metals, you will get for aluminum, but they cannot take much load. So, you see the use, it is written false ceiling. So, you may see from the main, from the main roof, you may see that suspended aluminum if this is the main roof, suspended aluminum frame is there and you have to put the false ceiling supported here. So, this will be a T section, this will be the T aluminum section. At the end of the wall, there will be an angle section. So, if you see a grid, if you see this picture here, you will see these are some false ceilings which are resting on such T sections, angle sections. If you happen to see some false ceiling, you will see the 
gypsum boards are placed and the edges are actually metals which are all aluminum framing. You can get sheets of aluminum, you can see in the picture the sheets of aluminum are the sheets of aluminum are laid, they may be corrugated, they may be flat. They can help in making temporary sheds. They are used for aluminum composite panels. We will come to that also. And it is also available in wire form, which is much used for electrical electrical conduits wiring. So, similar to ferrous metals we can see in just keeping aside the structural loading all the things that is possible with ferrous metals is possible with aluminum. Coming to aluminum composite panel. Now, you see this red panels fixed to a frame and you can understand inside there is a wall and you get a beautiful cover. So, the ugly thing which was seen is now with a frame is clad with or coated with a beautiful colored finish. So, this is not a plain aluminum sheet. You see the word composite is there. Composite means it is a combination. So, combination of what? Two aluminum panels, combination of two aluminum panels. with a central core that is the core and these are the aluminum sheets. This is also the aluminum sheet on two sides. So, this is a core which is sandwiched in between two aluminum sheets and overall thickness is as low as 3 millimeter. You can get up to 6 millimeter, 4 millimeter and 3 millimeter. And the aluminum sheet is of thickness of 0.5 millimeter. So, you can understand how thin the sheets are, not even a millimeter thick. And the central part is the core which is the polyethylene core or fiber or rock wool core. How are they different? PE cores are flammable. So, if there is case of fire, PE cores will be damaged. If it is in a safer, if you want a safer wall, safer cladding, you can use FR cores and sometimes aluminum honeycomb core is also available. That means, it is lesser of aluminum used and there is a separate core. So, these are combined under pressure and these sheets are available in market for as a cladding member and many a places you will see paints are being replaced to give a aesthetically pleasing look with beautiful colors combined together and you may come across when you come into an urban urban area say cities you will see aluminum composite panel facades. But remember that these are very much flammable 
mostly it is the polyethylene used and we can we may enter into fire whenever there is a case. So, coming to the coming to copper you see copper has been used in the copper box stadium in London London Olympics. In the Jurassic Museum in Spain it is resembling the this picture is resembling that of a paw of a dinosaur because, because it is a Jurassic Museum. What is there? See this is a very modern building. This is in 2000 the box stadium is in 2012 Olympics London Olympics. This is you see the roof is made of this copper. Architects pronounced architects Ero Sarinen, Franco Gheri, Renzo Piano have used copper as a prestigious element, prestigious metal. So, you can see these structures and we will come to the discussion quickly to the extraction. The ore is copper pyritis and copper glands one is carbonate other is sulphide and obviously the process of smelting that is heating at high temperature is involved Calci that is calcining the ore and the oxide is formed after putting this first extracted metal into the Bessemer converter. Removal of the major portions of iron, sulfur compounds happen in the Bessemer converter. It is a very similar process and blister copper is obtained. Blister copper is then made into pure copper means pure copper is extracted just by taking out impurities through the process of electrolysis. So, you see the process of electrolysis in case of aluminum, in case of copper is very important. So, these also raise the price. Malleable, tough and ductile copper is thus obtained. Now, as I have told you through the two pictures that copper is a very prestigious element. You have seen in chapels, top, uh, chapels, building tops, roofs, inaccessible parts in earlier days it was extensively used. But presently as you saw our famous architects using it, we also generally recommend it for say star rated hotels interiors, door knobs, sanitary wares, making of brass fittings where copper is one of the ingredients. We can find applications there. The first picture you can see it is a very old from a very old chapel, very old chapel where the door has actually become green. It is copper. It, the door has a copper covering. In this, this is a brass knob. This is a copper basin, wash basin. These are in very rich hotels, very, very renowned hotels. So, these kind of interiors you can see. It can be some ornamental item in a hotel reception. And as you all know copper in wires as wires for electrical connections. Brass and bronze has a percentage good percentage of copper in it and brass is used for also used for hinges that is building hardware. So, we come to the next element 
or next non ferrous metal zinc. Zinc is weather proof, seismic proof, corrosion resistant, immune to UV rays, ensures very long life without maintenance. Zinc is mostly used for galvanizing as you all know. You see one example is there of the chess club in Russia, but zinc is mostly used for galvanizing across the world. Zinc blend or blackjack is its ore, calamine or zinc carbonate is its other ore and again you see stepwise it is written calcining which involves removal of the sulphur or the carbonate then iron removal of impurity through electromagnetic process and then finally getting the pure form of zinc which is electrolysis. Zinc is again used as an alloy for making bronze, German silver etcetera and galvanization is the other or the key purpose which we as architects need to know. Now, we have another important metal left which is lead and maybe it is important to mention it is no longer in use in building industry. It had a enormous application in making paints as a pigment in paint, metal flashings, it was used in plastic and rubber industries, but because it is poisonous, it has been found in the late 19th century, not many years back. The pollution control board has banned it, it has toxic effects on human body. So, lead which was actually the base for paints is no longer there and the cost of paints have gone out, gone higher. So, we have to replace lead and we mostly no longer recommend lead for any purpose. The major ore is galena that is again lead sulphide and it is a heavy metal with low melting point that gives one application which is still there. Because of its low melting point, it finds application in making woods metal which is used in fire sprinkler nozzles. What happens here? When there is a fire, you see here there is a red filament, here there is a red filament. When the temperature rises, this actually senses and that with the temperature here the nozzles have woods metal plugged in, which has a very low melting point and the nozzles open and the water gushes out, water comes out from all the points of this ceiling of this sprinkler and it acts. So, we use woods metal for this for sealing these sprinkler nozzles and where actually it is bismuth, lead, tin and cadmium uh, alloy which is used to plug in these nozzles. So, this is where we find the application of lead till date. We had discussed, we have talked of tin earlier for Pilkington process. We get tin in sheets, those are very low cost items for low cost uh, temporary structures. We use chromium in alloying for getting stainless steel, we use nickel. So, there are so many non ferrous metals, but we would all these discussions we finish this module. Thank you.